Good morning from the uh, Rawalpindi Cricket Stadium. It is the Bank Alphala presents Blue World City Pakistan versus Bangladesh Test Series. Day three of the second test. We're all geared up for some real good action here. Just a quick look at what is happening and what to expect in the coming uh, three days. First day was completely washed out, so literally it was the first day yesterday. Pakistan were bowled out for 274, and then Bangladesh in reply scored 10 runs, so the trail is of 264. Whether this score is good enough, batting first in a four-day test match, I've got my guests along me, along with me, and I'm going to ask them the question. Atar Ali Khan, Amir Sohail, good morning to you, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. 274, I'll start with you, Atar. Uh, you feel Bangladesh would feel maybe 50 a touch too many. They could have control if the catches were taken. Yeah, absolutely spot on because they did... Uh, go drop a few uh, chances but uh, uh, you can't think too much about the pass still they'll be pretty pleased to see that uh, they have bowled uh, Pakistan out for 274 what is more important for Bangladesh is to realize the fact that uh, since uh, if you look back uh, last couple of years the top order uh, not contributing so but they did contribute in that uh, first test innings of the first test match. So they have to back well. It is of mighty importance if they can manage to hold on to the nerves. Survived yesterday, remember, the first ball went to the slip straight forward chance, floored by Saud Shakil. Uh, so you, if you can handle uh, yourself early on, not to lose early wickets, then uh, you might con take control of the test match. But still an open test match and it can move either way. Keeping four days in mind, Amir, how do you feel personally Pakistan's batting 274 and the way they approach that innings through the day? I think, yes, sir, there were a few catches dropped, but still I would say if as a side you're able to restrict an opposition to 274, it's job well done. I mean, uh, yes, there, there has been so much of conjecture that this pitch is going to respond to the fast bowlers, blah, blah, blah. It hasn't happened really. Yes, with the new ball, you know, we saw a bit of movement in the air and also deviation of the surface. But it has been manageable and it was shown by Sean and uh, uh, Saima Yub. But unfortunately, Pakistani batters couldn't apply themselves. But you have to give a lot of credit to uh, Matthias and Mirage because when you talk about a finger spinner bowling in a test match, especially in the first innings, his job is to do the holding job rather than attacking the batters. But what he did was not only uh, stifle the run scoring but also managed to pick up two main wickets after lunch and from there the rocks started for Pakistan. So you have to give credit to Bangladeshi bowlers and that's what you want to see from the Pakistani bowlers. They have to show discipline, they have to show patience to be able to pick up 10 wickets. Now when you look at what uh, Bangladesh did, six wickets out of the 10 went to spinners. How will the surface play on day three? Bazut Khan is out there, let's join him and find out. We had an excellent day's play yesterday with the ball carrying through nicely. It was a little different to what we saw in the first test match. Now, the difference was that the ball bounced more on the first day, which was technically day two of test match number two, compared to day one of uh, test match number one, seven centimeters. Now, that is a little We'd say seven centimeters, you take that on its own, it's not a big difference, but in terms of the bounce, that is significant. And that has caused the bowlers to be able to bowl short of length and get something extra from the pitch. Now, two dismissals I want to talk about. Firstly, South Shaquille, ball does nip back in, but it's that extra bounce that almost hits him on the glove and then goes on to the stumps. Then Nahid Rana smashes the ball into the pitch. Rizwan nicks it to slip, again, extra bounce. So that's something that the bowlers can work on. As I look at this pitch, it reminds me of the old days where the Raval Pindi pitch on the second day, third day would just get slightly quicker. And I think because it's harder, this pitch, than the one prepared in the first test match, there is something on offer. There is still that grass, those tufts of grass and nice covering. But I reckon because it's hard if I move down here, this is about the length, the short of length where you want to be pitching it. There is some patches where it's bare, so there might be indifferent bounce. But I think if you really hit the ball hard into the deck, you'll get something more. So work with swing, but after that, it's short of length for the fast bowlers. And that's been working well. I think, again, this is set up to be a very good good day of test match cricket. 
Yeah, he's spoken a lot. We have spoken a lot about the spice and the kick in the surface, the grass covering and everything. But the role of the spinners, like I mentioned, six wickets went to them. How do you see spinners coming into play, Abrar getting first opportunity along with Salman? Will they have a loud, bigger say? Uh, they should. Because if you look at uh, Madison Miraj, I mean, uh, he knew that uh, he doesn't ha have uh, too much to in his favor when he went uh, to Kabul his very first over. Remember, there's so much grass on the surface. So when that happens, then there are a lot of things goes into this, especially if you're a spinner, at the back of your mind, oh, what am I going to do? What kind of favor am I going to put? Am I going to get any purchase from the surface or not? But I think sticking to line and length will be the key. I think that's exactly what it did. I mean, uh, remember, Remember, the last time any spinner in Pakistan picking up five wickets in the first inning of a test match happened in way back in 2000. That was Ashley Giles. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, uh, Madison Miraj has done it after 24 years. Yeah. So it's a special, special performance. But Abra will need to look in that direction and also think about just bowling line and length. Apply the pressure dry up the runs and see what the ball does because the ball at times have done something for the spinners as well. I, I just want to add yep. uh, to your question. You know, when you talk about a broad balling on a surface like this, uh, Bazid was alluding to the fact there'll be more pace, mm. bounce in the surface. So he has to rely on his sliders mm. to be able to pick up the wickets and it only be effective if he bowls off stump line, from there he bowls googlies, and then have the batsman patting the ball, from there the slider is going to work. He has to be patient, let me tell you that, mm. like Medias and Mirage was. He has to do the holding job, and then he has to keep on thinking how to use that slider on a pitch like this. All right, we'll talk more about how Pakistan's bowling unit can perform and get wickets which they want to in a day's time. It's time for a short break, we'll be back. Welcome back to the Pitch Size Studio. Time for us to join Masterclass with Nick Compton and Uruj Mumtaz in the centre, talking to us, telling us how to deal with the incoming deliveries. Yeah, what a cracking start to Test 2, Day 2, and uh, what an inspired selection from Bangladesh, bringing Taskeen Ahmadin, who put the cracks in the Pakistan top order straight away. Let's revisit that very first over from yesterday. Start of play, Abdullah Shafiq set up to, and being challenged on both sides of the edges. The setup, the first five deliveries off a length, the ball just shaping away, one barely missing the outside edge, and then the absolute Jaffa to follow. The one from wide of the crease, the angle in, the nip off the surface, and it's just one of the deliveries. You put your hand up and say, well, bold, sir. However, you still got to play them. And I've got Nick Compton alongside Nick. Firstly, let's revisit that first over. Phenomenal, but you still have to have the technique to play those. Yeah, good morning, Aruj. What a lovely day. Makes you want to put the pads on. <laughs> Look, facing the, the new ball is one of the toughest things to do. And one of the reasons is there's a lot of movement. It's hard and you don't know what to expect. So when you come in as a batsman, as an opening batsman, the first thing I'm thinking about is how do I build from a, a stable start? How do I build my house, so to speak? You know, initially when you come in, you want to be a little bit circumspect. You want to know where your off stump is. So for me, against that kind of bowler, I think he was outstanding. And the reason why he was outstanding is that he set him up, didn't he? Yep. The first five balls were nice away swingers. So there I am, the ball's swinging away. I'm thinking, okay, he's bowling away, he's bowling away. And then suddenly, turns the ball around and bang it comes through the thing so the the main thing to do there against Tuscan I would have done is is try to take one mode of dismissal out I would have covered my stumps perhaps st stood on off stump and I'd be waiting for that ball to come back in the one that away that goes away boys and girls is not the one that I'm actually worried about it's I'm waiting I'm thinking okay there's one away there's one away when is that one going to come back in and, that was, and that's the ball you've got to be ready for. And I think Abdullah Shafiq, although he was done by a brilliant piece of bowling, I think he could have been more ready for that ball to come back in. A little bit more. Let's get into a little bit more depth. Uh, if you can surf, sort of further elaborate, like you mentioned, we've got a lot of young listeners out there who want to learn the art. Is it almost a case of sort of focusing and having those blinkers on when you're only channeled and watching for that ball within the line and then having that technique and the frame of mind to leave outside? Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I think for young boys and girls, when you're playing, 
The game is, you, there's a lot of shots available to you, particularly in the subcontinent. Once you get in, the ball gets flat. You can hit through the offside, you can hit through the leg side. But I believe you've got to start with a much finer or refined way of looking at, the, at that delivery. So for example, when I come in, I just want to be thinking about playing straight. I don't want to be thinking about cover drives. I don't want to be thinking about the other shots, but those will come. But initially, get yourself in. And that process can take 10, 15, 20 balls sometimes. So you see a lot of young players come in and they're, they're trying to hit the cover drives, they're trying to hit all the shots. You don't need to do that. That can come later on, once you're in, once your eyes in, once you've worked out what the bowler is doing. Right, lastly and very quickly, put you on the spot. What is a one drill or a couple of things that players coming through the ranks can actually do as practice to bring it into perfection? What I did was I, I stood in front of my stumps and a lot of people say, oh, well, you can get LBW. But actually, no, because if I'm standing in front of my stumps, I'm now looking for that straight delivery. My eyes aren't looking for anything out yep. here because I don't have anything to cover. So as young players, get someone to throw underarms to you, let the ball travel as far as you can. And when you hit it, hit it nice and straight and hit it back into the ground. The one thing about hitting back into the ground is you can't play the ball early if you do that. So that's one of the best drills I feel, particularly as an opening batsman, when playing the ball late and under your eyes is so important. Well, like you said, it is absolutely important. Challenging, but it's not impossible. Yeah, a classic example of what not to do if you're an opening batter or someone trying to understand what the bowler is trying to do against you. And yesterday when Abdullah Shafiq got out, I was sitting with Amir Sohail and I'd like you to share what you said back then with the youngsters and others who are watching. Look, uh, I think uh, Nick was absolutely brilliant in uh, elaborating everything. But when you talk about Abdullah Shafiq, the problem I see, he shuffles. And once he shuffles, he looks to play everything of, uh, of the front foot. What happens is when he takes that front leg towards the off stump, his upper body goes towards the off stump as well. And from there, he has to take his hands away from the body. And from there, when he brings the bat down, there is always a gap between bat and pad. So he has, he has to have his upper body still. It's only legs. They're going to cover the line. If he moves his upper, upper body, like he bends it more, the head goes towards second slip. And from there, it's very difficult to actually deal with in-swinging deliveries. Okay, you want to say add something? Peach of a delivery. Don't forget that. Yep. It was absolutely... Oh, we know that. I thought we know that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's, it's not easy for uh, the openers because yeah. once you have five uh, balls go going, going away from the body yeah. and once it jacks back yeah. in, yeah, a bit faulty, but a great delivery. Great delivery. So you, you're giving uh, Abdullah a little bit of an escape. <laughs> All right, time for a break. When we come back, we'll try to wrap up and uh, tell you what to expect on day three. <laughs> Welcome back once again to the Pitch Side Studio. Now, in this final segment, we'll talk about what to expect on day three and how Pakistan would like to make inroads in terms of getting the Bangladesh batters out. And highlight of that, what we saw on day two, was the catches. Four were dropped by Bangladesh and the very first ball of the Bangladesh innings, catch was dropped by Saud Shagir. Have a look at that. This was Shah Man's catch and at this level, you would say, yes, things do travel very fast in that slip corner, but you've got to take those and especially Ame, when you talk about good batting tracks, this is so important. Uh, that's where Bangladeshi team made the difference uh, in the first test match. They were absolutely brilliant. They, they had, uh, held on to everything came their way and their ground fielding was very good. But yesterday, uh, I, I think it was not up to the mark and I think uh, it rubbed off to the Pakistanis as well. Mm. Atta, how important do you feel would be this first two hours with the Bangladesh openers 10 for no loss? Very important because they wanted to see uh, two unbeaten batters uh, at stumps that eventually happen. But they have to start all over again. One thing goes in their favour is that they, they'll be batting with some sort of confidence in a sense because they posted the highest total against Pakistan in the first test match, 565. Opener among the runs, middle order, Muminul Haq uh, and the magnificent uh, big hundred from uh, Mushfiqur Rahim. 50s uh, also from... Uh, uh, Litun Kumar So the batters have scored runs. So the ones who get set, he has to take the responsibility to ride and ride a long innings. Otherwise, trouble. Because if you start losing wickets from both ends, mm. then that is a problem. They haven't faced Abrar before in yep. this test series. So that is a surprise factor for them. But once you get set, <coughs> then you've got to take the utmost responsibility to play a long innings. A quick one from you, Amir. What to expect? Three days to go. 
Are we looking at a result? Could be either way. It all depends today. Yeah. What happens today? Pakistan has Pakistan has to enforce things, and I I would like Pakistani bowlers to be patient and keep in their mind that they are there for 90 overs. They cannot take 10 wickets in a jiffy, so they have to show patience. All right, thank you, gentlemen. We'll let you get into some shade. All set for day three, Pakistan and Bangladesh into the second Test match. Ten for no loss. All to play for. Enjoy.